is a rio tourist train which I feel long and still flying from the river where I set him in a tavern to drink Three sinners one day were in a bar when they heard a bell that was on a dead body clink as it went past the window on its way to the grave. One of the men called to the servant and said, Go quickly and find out who has just died, and make sure you get his name right this time. The servant said, Well, I don't have to because I found out about two hours ago that he was an old friend of yours who was killed just last night. He was completely drunk when the shadowy thief called Death, who is responsible for all the deaths in this country, drove his weapon into the man's heart and sliced it in two before silently moving on again. He has killed thousands during this plague, so be careful, because you can never anticipate his presence, since he will appear unexpectedly. At least that's what my mother always told me. The bartender then said, He is right. Death has killed many men, women, and children in a large town about a mile from here. I bet that death lives there, so it would be smart to be prepared in case we ever meet him. One of the men replied, Jeez, is death really that dangerous? Then I swear to God that I will hunt him down because I am not afraid of death. My friends, are you thinking what I am thinking? Why don't we grab hands and swear an oath to become brothers? Together we can kill death in revenge for all the other people he has killed. We will find him and cut him down before today is over. Together, the three sinners swore to live and die for each other like they had been brothers from birth. Then they stood up, very angry and very drunk, and left the bar to go to the town that the bartender had mentioned in hopes of finding and killing death. They had not gotten far, though, when they came across a very old man. The old man greeted them politely and said, Gentlemen, may God bless you and keep you well. What the hell do you want, old man? The most arrogant of the men asked. Why are you all bundled up except for your face? How are you so old? Shouldn't you be dead by now? The old man looked him right in the eyes and said, I couldn't even find a man in India or in any city or town who would trade their youth for my old age. Hence why I am still here or until God wills otherwise since death himself wouldn't even take my life. That's why I'm as old and disgusting as I am, wandering around like a restless soul. I even knock my walking stick on the ground morning and night, hoping Mother Earth will take me back. Mother Earth, let me in, I say. Just look at how ugly I am since my skin and blood are all drying up. Unfortunately, she has ignored all of my requests, and I am forced to live in this old, eroding body of mine. Still, it isn't very nice to talk to an old man the way you just did, unless he's done something really awful to you. Respect your elders. Don't do or say things to an old man that you wouldn't want done or said to you. May God go with you wherever you go. Me, I should go away now. Hold the phone, Gramps, one of the ruffians said. You're not going anywhere, old man. Seems like you know a lot about this bastard death who's been killing all of our friends. Are you two working together or something to try and kill all the young people around here? I think you're his spy. By God and the Bible, you'd better tell us where death is. Well, you whippersnappers, he said, if you must know, you can find death up this crooked path in a meadow under a big oak tree. Let the one who has saved all humankind save you. The sinners then stumbled all the way to the oak tree, and when they got there, they found barrels of gold and chests overflowing with precious metals. At this point, they no longer cared about seeking revenge against death, because they were too distracted by the shininess of all that gold. The worst one of all the sinners said, My brothers, I have an idea. Fortune has led us to this treasure, so we can continue to live our lives in frivolity. Let's celebrate! But we need to bring all of this gold to either my house or your house, and we can't do that in the daylight or some will think we're stealing our own money. 
So why don't we draw straws to see who will go into the town and grab us some food or wine. The other two will sit and guard our treasure. And then when he returns, we can carry the treasure away. And then he put three straws in his fists and had each of the other two take one to see who would be the one to run into town. The youngest of the three picked the short straw, so he left right away for town. Once he was gone, one of the rogues said to the other, I know that we swore oaths to each other like we were brothers, but wouldn't it be nice if we could split the treasure two ways instead of three? What do you think about that? Well, that would be just great, the other one said. But I don't know how you're going to do that, since the kid already knows about the gold. What would we say to him? Well, I know that together we are stronger than him. So when he gets back, we will jump on him like we're just joking around. And I will stab him through the side, and you will do the same. We will try to make it look like an accident. And then we can enjoy the gold for ourselves. Both men then agreed to kill the third. The youngest, who had gone to town, was so excited about all the gold that he devised a plan to have it all for himself. He decided to buy poison to kill the other two men, and he wouldn't even feel bad about it since he had already committed so many sins. So when he got to town, he went to the drugstore and asked about buying some poison so he might kill the rats in his backyard. Sure, I can sell you some strong poison, the clerk said. This stuff is so strong that there isn't a single creature in the world that could ingest it and not die. It works fast, too, since it will take effect before you can even walk a mile. The young man bought the poison and then went up the street to buy three large wine glasses. He put the poison in two of them, but he kept the third bottle empty for his own drink, since he knew he would need it to move all the gold by himself later that night. He then headed back to the oak tree, where his friends were waiting for him. While there isn't really much more to say, the two older friends killed the youngest right after he returned from town, just like they had planned. They celebrated by drinking the wine before burying the body. As luck would have it, one of the rogues grabbed and drank from the poisoned wine and passed it along to his friend. And in no time at all, they were both dead.